Call the Honourable Mr. Phil Goff Mr. in reply. Mr Speaker, uh, clearly the research unit of the National Party faced a dilemma when they were drafting the identical notes for the National Party backbench. And the dilemma is this, that fundamentally the National Party understands that New Zealanders support the approach that I am proposing in this bill. And I say that not as a rash claim. The Herald has run a digipoll on this bill, and it shows that 55% of New Zealanders support it, and 33% oppose. Now, now, that means, Mr Speaker, that there is cross-party support for this bill. I reckon if I went to David Bennett's electorate in Hamilton East and talked to his farmers, they would have something to say about this, and they would be positive about it. In fact, I saw the president of Federated Farmers, known elsewhere as the National Party in gumboots, but a very fine guy, William Rolleston, warning New Zealanders about the risks of wholesale loss of land to overseas investors, telling New Zealanders that vertical integration where foreign individuals or companies owned everything from the farm right down to the supermarket shelves and the risk that posed to New Zealand's interests. That was Federated Farmers. I heard the, the, uh, the mogul of the free enterprise world. Um, he had a very spirited dinner, I think, Mr Speaker. I was going to ask for an interpretation of his speech, um, and, and I looked to the National Party benches, and they couldn't help. But the two freest market economies in the world are probably Hong Kong and Singapore, both Chinese, by the way. That's apropos of nothing. They place restrictions on foreign ownership of land and residential properties. This isn't unusual. Any government that's worth its salt, Mr Speaker, puts the interests of its residents before the interests of foreign investors. We will have foreign investment in this country where it's good for New Zealand. But where it simply forces up residential property prices or forces young New Zealanders to remain the share milkers and the employees instead of the farmers, then we will unashamedly stand up for New Zealanders. No apology for that whatsoever. And the National Research Unit had a choice. They thought, we can either say this bill is no different from what we're doing, and the National Party tried to run that line, or we can say this bill is fundamentally racist, and they tried to run that line as well. But unfortunately, those two arguments are mutually contradictory. I want to say that New Zealanders have had a guts full of people who play the race card in reverse. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example, Mr Speaker. There was a property developer this week well-known property developer in Auckland who was rack-renting to new migrants trailer homes where 14 people were forced to share one toilet. That was wrong. That's wrong in anybody's language. But because that property developer happened to be Dong Hua Lu, when he was criticised, we were told that that criticism was racist. That criticism wasn't racist, Mr Speaker. That criticism was criticism of an individual, regardless of his ethnicity, that was behaving in an inappropriate and unethical way. Come to your and bro. I will not accept any criticism from any member on that party that ran the Iwi versus Kiwi ads and stood behind Don Brash and that man. I will not take any criticism from those people at all. There is nothing in my bill that discriminates against any New Zealander. What it does is acts on behalf of every New Zealander. I've talked to my Chinese constituents and my Indian constituents, and they think that it's a good idea that New Zealand should own its own future. Because those Chinese and those Indian constituents are proud to be New Zealanders. And this bill stands up for New Zealanders. So don't come at me with a cheap and shabby criticism that is not worthy of many of those people on that bench who should know better. What this bill does, Mr Speaker, very clearly, 
is what the National Party promised to do but failed to deliver. It says, and the Overseas Investment Act says, that owning land if you're a foreigner is a privilege, and you have to earn that privilege, and the way you earn that privilege is by showing you produce substantially more jobs or substantially more exports. If you can't come up to that standard, don't come here Sorry to, to speculate interrupt the member, but on our time property market. <laughs> Members, the question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. no. The noes have it. The ayes have it. The clerk will conduct a party vote in silence. New Zealand National. 59 votes opposed. New Zealand Labour. 32 votes in favour. Green Party. 14 New Zealand First. 12 votes in favour. Māori Party. Two votes in favour. Yes. Act New Zealand. One vote opposed. The vote will be heard in silence. It's not that long since a certain member was ejected for not doing that. He's just done it again. He's on notice, as are others who were interjecting in the course of the vote. Please complete the party vote. United Future. One vote opposed. Members, the ayes are 60, the noes are 61. The motion is lost. Call on members or of the day number four.